a great conversation about the birds. But yeah, the birds here where I am are out, are just waking up. So good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to all the birds and to everyone on behalf of the UBIS faculty, staff, and administration, and current students. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. It is a pleasure to have you all. It is um, great to see some familiar faces that we had met uh, throughout the DBA um, sessions that we had had with Dr. Tuarkuli. Um, and getting to know a lot of you and your backgrounds and your experiences and and, 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 and where you're from and getting to know uh, more about your background. Again, it is a pleasure to have you all here today and hope you can get a lot of your questions answered um, during our roundtable event for our doctor students. I will start by talking um, about our mission statement. As UBIS, we are dynamic, we are professional, we are caring, we are stimulating, and we are also committed to increasing the quality, uh, affordability, and access to tertiary education around the globe. At the University of Business and International Studies, we aspire to create, build, and enrich lifelong prosperity for the common global citizen by inspiring and advancing self-determination through education. Also important to mention the reason why we, we love UBIS. Uh, we love UBIS because of our close links with the corporate world, partnerships with the universities worldwide, small, small classes, uh, max of 20 per classroom, emphasis on practical experience, network with the United Nations, uh, 13 plus students alum and alumni from over 30 nationalities, and the ability to hop off and on from ground new online and the flexibility when it comes to our schedules. Today's agenda, uh, we will want to make this very informal today as we want you not to be shy and ask, and ask any questions that you may have, but what we have done is we have gathered some of our frequently asked questions that we get from our students throughout the time and we have put them all in one slide. We have done it in two different sections, frequently asked questions for faculty. Uh, we have frequently asked questions for the students that they can answer for the current students and future classmates that they can answer for you. Any additional question that we may be able to put in in our next session. And also most importantly, talk about next steps as the beginning of classes is approaching pretty soon. So the, the first step is to introduce you. So our panel of experts here today um, and some of our faculty which is um, Dr. Sean Yasso, Dr. Antonina Santalova, Dr. Dola Krebs, and Dr. Tanem Tram. If you guys could spend a couple of minutes introducing yourself, then let's move on to the student page and we can get started. So why don't we do ladies first? Um, Viola, Dr. Viola, Dr. Antonina, if one of us, one of you can give us a pleasure um, to introduce yourself, that will be amazing, thank you. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening. And yes, we had a nice discussion about birds. Um, <laughs> uh, this to say that we're a global university. Uh, well, a few words about myself. I'm a Swiss national. I live uh, in France, but I, I'm right across the border. So navigating between Switzerland and France. I'm a uh, graduate of the University of Geneva and I uh, have a PhD from the University of Strasbourg in France. Um, I've also been an entrepreneur managing an organization for close to 20 years. Uh, so, you know, navigating between academia and, and also having uh, field experience. Um, I, I've had the opportunity to actually work on four continents. Um, around the world, in other words. So um, what I really uh, love about UBIS is that it's global. 
and that we have students from around the world and when we can take those experiences into the classroom it 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 gives um, the possibility of wonderful exchanges that are hands-on and so that this i will stop with 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 this um, we combine theory and practice and and i think that's something um, that I can see um, being quite powerful. And anyway, it's great to see you here. Um, and we're here to welcome you and then work with you, develop a relationship with you and make sure that your journey with us and beyond UBIS is going to be successful. Back to you, Raf. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Antonina, please. Uh, hi everyone. So my name is Antonina Santelova. Um, that's okay if you call me Tony, uh, as our university is very international. I'm based in the UK, uh, Oxford in particular. I can, I, uh, my PhD is from Oxford University and I continue teaching at Oxford University as well as UBIS. Uh, so but all questions are really welcome because my experience is really wide as well and i've been working in the post uh, soviet central asian countries as well as china and russia you know for international range of actually international organizations so yes like uh, violas my experience is a kind of not academia only so that's why i'm happy to introduce some extra experience uh, of mine to you best like in consultancy uh, so, and yes, welcome everyone. And I'm looking forward to a productive discussion today. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the gentleman, Dr. Sean or Dr. Tenan. If one of you can um, introduce yourself, whoever wants to go first is fine. Good morning from Los Angeles. I'll go. It's delight I'm delighted to be with you all. Um, as you have heard, this is probably the most international university you've ever experienced. Uh, it's pretty cool that we're all here, what, 30 of us in different time zones. I know that's not maybe, <clears throat> I know that's, I don't think that's normal, to be honest. I think that's exceptional. And you're here, you made it, and you are in good hands. This program, this university is entrepreneurial. Uh, visionary, exciting, and we're going to push you. Uh, we're going to change you and teach you to think critically, as you might have heard that before. But by doing that, you're going to advance and you're going to really grow. And that's our job. And that's, uh, as was said, our job is to help you with a journey. I'm very happy to see uh, some current students here who are busy reading stuff for class due in a few days. Um, and so they're gonna talk about all of that. This is, so I, I want you to get ready for um, a, a, a journey of a lifetime, really. This is a big deal. If it were easy, everyone would do it, but it's not. And that's why I think you've signed up. Looking forward to a conversation ahead and a good be with you. Thank you. Awesome. And last but not least, Anam. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, it's very nice to, uh, it's my uh, great pleasure to be here with you. Um, my name is, is Tana, Taman, but you can call me Matthew, uh, which is you better. Um, I've been, um, I've, uh, I've been a, a, a committee member, a thesis committee member for the students in Vietnam, for the DBA students in Vietnam. Um, and uh, I've been uh, designing the the local support service, and I've been their local instructor uh, for two years. Well, um, about me, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, of course, and uh, my field of, of uh, research is, uh, was uh, entrepreneurship, um, information system, and sustainability. Uh, for me, learning is, uh, um, you will never stop learning. So. Uh, still, after DBA, I understand um, uh, you are going to do your own research and solve your own problems. Um, and with UBIT um, and with the professor and the instructor that you're uh, uh, about to, to meet and discuss, um, again, you're in good hands. Uh, we're all um, entrepreneurial, 
uh, international. And for me, um, very uh, personalized uh, in terms of service. And um, at the end of the day, uh, your research uh, or your program is, is for, it's very personal. Um, each of you will, will uh, try to focus on a problem of your own of personal interest or your, or your own career. Uh, and I think this will help you a great deal. Um, I'm very happy to, to discuss further. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So we have a great uh, panel also, or students, or your DBA classmates. So for the sake of time, so we can make sure that everybody can answer questions. If you can all briefly introduce yourself, that'd be um, greatly appreciated. So let's start also with the ladies. Um, why don't we start with you, Anna? Sure, hi everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be here as well. Um, well, um, just a short introduction. So I'm actually from Albania, but I've been living in Germany since I was a teenager. So, um, and I've graduated in Germany as well. And now um, I work in management consulting and I'm also involved in um, infrastructural and energy projects, which also deal with uh, the Balkans region. Um, why I chose UBIS? Well, um, I've actually had a few interviews with other universities and what, what really, um, what was amazing about UBIS is, was that um, I realized since the first interview that there is a very student-centered culture. Um, so, and, you know, I was, I was totally, you know, sure that, um, you know, this is the right thing for me because I was, I was told, I mean, I was told how well I would be assisted throughout my whole journey and everything was clear since the very beginning. And that just made the whole difference um, in comparison to my other interviews I had. And so I gave it a go. And my first class was uh, with Dr. Jaso, who I was totally honored to. And we were taught since the very beginning how important it was to be I mean, to, you know, help each other. And um, I'm totally proud to say that we have a great team and um, amazing uh, people that we work with uh, every week. And we're so well assisted during, throughout all, our whole assignments. Um, so yeah, well, um, I'm proud to be here and thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, Carmela, do you wanna go next? Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Carmela Ferreira and um, I'm from the Philippines. I just began my, my DBA journey at UBIS in June and have gone through, I'm almost done with a second cohort, um, uh, Trends in Leadership. And I find that um, the program is, suits me very well because I'm able to allot time um, enough for reading every day. And we meet twice a week um, synchronously and asynchronously. So um, there are, I can manage my time well while also working. Um, I run a, a K to 12 international school um, in the Philippines. And so my classes are in the evenings. Um, I spend a lot of time reading from eight o'clock in the evening onwards. Uh, classes are 9.30, um, nine, nine o'clock, sorry, until around uh, 10.30 to 11. Uh, there's a lot of discussion. It's very animated in the classes and I appreciate the different perspectives from classmates who come from all around the world. So it's really an international um, interaction, which uh, stimulates a lot of um, uh, thoughts and ideas uh, being discussed um, and monitored and uh, by our, our expert professors. Thank you. Thank you, Carmela. But, um, move on. Let's move on to Patricia. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. 
My name is Patricia Aga, and I live in Lagos. I'm from Nigeria. Um, I'm excited to be part of this uh, um, panel. And I, I, the reason why I chose UBIS was because I saw UBIS as a very international school, um, very global in, in its perspective. And one other area that was quite uh, interesting for me was the focus on entrepreneurship. It's very business focused and most of the faculty are you know, seasoned business people and have business experience, real life business experience. So for me, that was very important um, because I, I come from a corporate background. I have about, um, about 19 years experience in different industries, in banking, um, in oil and gas. I, I just left the oil and gas industry this year to set up my own business. So um, having an entrepreneurial DBA was very important to me because I didn't want to learn about you know, theory. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to pontificate. I didn't want to learn about theory. I wanted to learn concepts and understand how to bring these things into my own business, you know, bring the concepts into my own business. And so far, um, I just started in August. So far, it's been really, really interesting and interactive. Um, it's gone beyond my expectations. I, I honestly didn't know what to expect, but it's gone way beyond my expectations. The, the class interactions are fantastic. Um, I mean, I always look forward to our live classes and hearing the perspectives from everybody um, all around the world. Um, it's a very diverse class, both in terms of um, nationality, as well as um, you know, um, skills and disciplines. Um, and then we're also moderated by our awesome professor, Dr. Jasso, <laughs> who has a way of making us want to contribute during the class. So yeah, so I think UBIS is, is great. It's a journey I'm just starting and I'm looking forward to, to you know, uh, hopefully not, not, I mean, not looking forward to the end, but I'm looking forward to the whole process and to who I'm going to be by the end of this process. Thank you. <laughs> great, thank you, Patricia, I appreciate it. Um, all right, let's move on to the gentleman. Uh, Shelter, if you give us a pleasure. Shelter is on, right? I believe I saw him. Sasha, do you want to get started next, if you don't mind, since I'm... Yeah, sure, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm back. Okay. I'm back. So... Um, Thank you, Ralph. Um, uh, as, uh, my name is Shelter, uh, Shelter Lutsu. I'm actually living in uh, Accra, Ghana, and um, uh, I'm very happy to be in this course uh, with UBS. I'm basically a civil engineer. Uh, I've practiced uh, civil engineering for quite a number of years, and I've also done MBA in uh, Salford University in the UK, and um, uh, I have elderly graduated, or maybe people that do as uh, business management uh, entrepreneurship, and therefore um, I decided to uh, find a very suitable university to do my DBA. Uh, I did a lot of search. It took me more than uh, three months to actually settle on UBS, and uh, I haven't regretted uh, assigning or maybe enrolling in the UBS. What I found is that uh, to be a doctoral student, you need to have a discipline and commitment to long hours of study. And also you have to prioritize your investment as said by Dr. Jazu. Uh, the first time we met Dr. Jazu, he said, you have to prioritize your investment. You have to have time for what you actually want to do. Uh, time management is one of the key qualities of a leader. You have to be uh, able to manage your time to be able to find what exactly you, you, you want to do, you want to achieve. Um, I'm hoping uh, with the exposure, I mean, the second cohort, uh, I am very happy that uh, uh, just before I'm ending the second cohort, I've actually found uh, I should be motivated by one of my uh, professors who's teaching us currently in leadership to find a niche uh, to even uh, decide to set up a leadership institute in my country, Ghana. How did I come by this? We've been pushed. We actually been pushed to find a literature about leadership in our region, in our country. And that has actually given me the... Uh, Idea that we do not have a lot of information to share to the world. Uh, it's not because 
uh, we, uh, we don't have the information, it's just because we haven't actually prepared ourselves for such information. And I actually will urge all new students that are coming to be open-minded, uh, get commitment, be sure of what you want, and then go for it. Thank you. Thank you, Shelter. Sasha. Okay, then good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be in the world. Um, my name is Sasha. I'm from originally from Germany. Uh, I do live in Sydney, Australia, but uh, work in Qatar, in the Middle East. In, I'm in Doha at this moment in time, um, working for Qatar Airways, the best airline in the world. Um, and I'm very, very happy to be with with you all today and with uh, UBIS. Um, I've, just to give you a quick academic background, um, I completed my bachelor in business and economics in Germany, um, then started to work and traveling the world, um, proceeded into general management and to more senior positions. And when I uh, became general manager in Sydney, Australia at the time, uh, then it was basically suggested that I'm doing an MBA, which I then did in, uh, in America in, at upstate New York, Clarkson University. Um, and when I basically finished that MBA, there was pretty much a void between, um, you know, um, finishing the MBA and, you know, suddenly there was no more university, no more studies, no more, no more reading, no more assignments. And, you know, I always say learning is like a race without a finish line. And I thought, okay, I need to do something. And uh, I started to look around the world also for universities. And I must say, I, I think I spoke to 20 plus, 25 plus universities. And there was no one like UBIS, you know, um, those, those guys uh, really, really impressed me with their, you know, with their, yeah, efforts to look after you. Until today, by the way, I, I want to point this out. It's not a university. As soon as you sign up, uh, no one cares anymore. Until today, um, every one of you is really looking after me, and um, which I find great. And, you know, I don't want to repeat what others already said. I can only echo again, especially what Anna said. Um, I, feel, I feel the same way. Um, we have first class and outstanding professors um, which is great fun. And although I give you um, a quick insight into to my uh, work life, I'm the senior vice president for Qatar Airways here. I do overlook ground operations at the moment, plus in-flight services. So I do travel quite a bit. And although it's a, it's a tough program and uh, tough assignments and timelines, um, you, you always have the flexibility of, um, you know, managing your work and your assignments, which... Um, which is great, which is another big plus for UBIS. And that's, that's me in a nutshell. Thank you, Sasha. All right, and last but not least, uh, Mr. Yagi. Great. Um, hi, everybody. Um, is my video and audio all right? Yep. <clears throat> okay, great. Um, uh, my name is Edward. I'm an American. Uh, I'm in Japan right now. It's um, uh, 11 o'clock at night. And uh, it, it's, it's pouring torrential rain right now. Um, we're having a storm here right now, which can make the internet um, a little bit spotty, but I, but I think it's okay. Um, I am a retired U.S. Navy fighter pilot. I'm a retired uh, career U.S. foreign service officer, uh, commercial diplomat. And I'm also a retired uh, uh, business school professor with tenure. Um, I got my MBA while I was doing all that. I got my MBA here in Japan 30 years ago uh, in Japanese, and I am still teaching uh, part time. In fact, right now I've got a, uh, an online MBA class in management science that I'm teaching right now this semester. Um, I am a transfer student. Um, I just completed uh, two full years of full time study at a double A CSB business school. And I transferred to UBIS just uh, two months ago uh, uh, for several reasons. Um, one of the reasons was uh, because uh, it um, um, uh, UBIS really sort of changed my mind about what I was doing my doctorate for. 
And the question that I asked myself was, do I want to get a doctorate to impress myself and to impress a relatively small number of people? Or do I want to do something really meaningful with it? Do I want to do something which is going to have real purpose and uh, 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 meaning far beyond what it would just do for me personally or in, in terms of prestige or for uh, my school? And so uh, uh, I, the, the philosophy at UBIS is to not just do something for the sake of doing it, but, but to have a, a, a really important meaning and purpose behind it. And I think that, uh, uh, that, that and once I understood that, it was a very, very easy decision uh, to transfer uh, to UBIS. The other reason uh, that I really like this school is because the networking is, uh, is almost unbelievable. Uh, I have taught or studied in probably 20 or 30 universities all around the world, and I have never seen any place that comes close to the diversity of UBIS in terms of talent, in terms of age, in terms of ge uh, geographical uh, location, and in terms of different point of view. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's just an absolutely fascinating uh, experience and I wouldn't want to be anyplace else. Thank you. I'll stop there. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate it. Oh, hey. So, um, as I was saying, we have gathered some of the frequently asked questions that we get from some of our students, and we have put them all into one slide. So, the first one is the credentials and background of the faculty. What are their credentials? And I believe uh, by uh, listening to the introductions, you have been able to gather where, are, where, are, where some of our instructors are coming from. But if one of you, um, Dr. Sean or Tony or Viola or Tam, if you guys want to add something, add a little bit more in regards to that, um, that'd be greatly appreciated. I can tell you something interesting. Okay. You see that little thing there, Claremont Graduate University? Some of you may not know where that is, but that's in California. And there's an old, old sage who died a few years ago who was my teacher, and his name is Peter Drucker. So you guys are two degrees of separation from him, me, and then him, and then you. So there you go. Edward, I know you didn't want to brag, but I'll brag a little bit. That's it. Awesome. All right, availability, um, availability and format. Um, can, can one of you comment on that, on the format of the courses, um, what to expect as far as the live lecture or what to expect as far as the recording sessions? Can, 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 one, of you, can one of you talk about that, please? Well, different uh, faculty members will maybe uh, favor different ways of, of, of interacting, but essentially, I mean, we have uh, the Zoom classes uh, where you have classes like you could see here, imagine this is a class, so um, where you get, you know, a PowerPoint or a presentation, and oftentimes the presentation is in fact not just made by the faculty member, but also by the students because the whole point is to, to get interaction. And something else, which is uh, really great, I, I find, for certain sessions is to actually have actually breakout sessions where you give a topic and then students will develop within a small working group uh, a topic and then come back to plenary. So, um, which is, you know, also kind of, um, mm, working with, with the concept of the reverse classroom. Um, yeah, so, uh, but, but it's very much about interactivity and, and actually working with different tools we have available out there uh, and on our computers. Thank you, Viola. It is important to, um, to mention the fact that we do have a, 
um, we challenge the boundaries of online, I would say traditional education by having a live lecture where our students are able to interact as, um, with, with their instructors. Um, and also you have the opportunity to not only see a live, but also it is recorded for those that cannot make a live session. Or uh, most importantly, you can also do both, uh, which I believe is great. Uh, next question, if English is my second language and we get this a lot, how can, can I be successful in writing a dissertation? What resources are available? And I, let me quickly comment on that. Mm -hmm. um, the dissertation is the end project, but we build you toward that project through, for example, just fundamental things like reading a lot and writing a lot. Most of our classes have um, that kind of engagement. So by the time you get to the dissertation in terms of comfort with not just writing in English, but writing critical thinking, crafting knowledge, and in a research approach, I think you'll, you're gonna be quite well prepared. Others can talk about uh, our library research, uh, accessibility and all of that. But um, so if you, when you hit my class, for example, you'll read, you'll read a lot and you'll write a lot uh, and you'll be ready for the dissertation for sure. Thank you, Sean, I appreciate that. Oh, hey, the next question is support through, a pro through my program. Hi, will I work? Rafael, I have my hand on. Oh, I'm sorry, Tony. I didn't see that. My bad. I am, I'm so sorry. What, I didn't. what is the procedure? Yeah, I, I, my, my, my okay. bad. I, I didn't notice that. So please go ahead. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You see hand up. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. Left upper corner. <laughs> thank you, Raf. Thank you. Uh, first of all, just the previous question about the format and the valuability, guys. I would like to say a couple of words. As you might have already known that Stuart... Um, um, and I as well, we come from, you know, European leading universities, Cambridge and Oxford. And I should say that UBIS is trying hard actually to combine the best practices of doctorate programs of the, you know, continental programs, as well as the American style programs. So that's why, you know, uh, I believe your cohort, you have uh, those uh, 700 courses as well as 800 courses. So the idea, I would say a grand idea behind that, apart from just writing and researching your topic, uh, that I'm sure all of you are very passionate about. You have those, uh, yes, sometimes uh, uh, theoretical, but courses as well, right? Which help you actually, you know, to, to, to set into this uh, uh, academic way of thinking, if you wish. Uh, of posing the questions, the research questions, and all those things as well. Uh, you know, at this the first part of your journey, I would like to emphasize that all of us, the lecturers, are really valuable. So please do turn to us with your questions whenever you need any help. Uh, both, you know, not only with the uh, language, English as a foreign language for some of you, but also the content and all the rest. And then the second part, ideally, you are going to have your supervisor who we believe, and you know, I teach a leadership course in UBIS uh, as well. So we talk about management up. So I would like to emphasize, do not forget about that. You know, that's a hint. Apart from just being managed, you're supposed to manage up, you know, so you, you also, you're also in charge of, you know, uh, building this quite close relationship with your supervisor to push him or her if it's needed, to ask the help needed. So kind of I would say that my request would be active, right, with, with, with your request, with whatever help you need and uh, you business staff, faculty, uh, trust me, we'll do our best, you know, to help you with that. Also, many of you, like Edward, that was fascinating to learn that you completed uh, your degree in Japanese. So I'm sure that you have <laughs> a huge case of recommendations about how to do that. I did the same. English is not my first language. So it's definitely possible, guys. It's, it's, it's really doable, right, Edward? Would you agree with me? Absolutely, Particular, particularly, particularly if you if, if you man, just manage your time well. You know, if you start if you start preparing now, just you know, pace yourself. You know, uh, you know, have have a plan, follow your plan. It'll be fun. 
Yeah, I agree with you. Time management yeah. definitely matters. But also, you know, reading, uh, Raf, we spoke about, uh, you know, maybe even have some, uh, at least a round table like that, or maybe, uh, you know, a conference, a seminar, like English as the first, second, as the second language or academic English or something like that. Raf, that might be a possibility. What do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. That we just give the exact recommendations, you know, how to go with the writing blog, you know, how, how to maybe look at at, uh, uh, even some sad phrases, like really there are patterns in any language that we can use in academic writing. So I would recommend that, Raf, that maybe we have a session, you know, like for those interested uh, in English as the second language. Absolutely. No, that's, that, that, that's very helpful, Tony. I appreciate it. And, and I think actually this is a very uh, fascinating discussion. Um, you know, I, I've, I've written and published in a number of different languages. And what I have found actually, and when I teach also, I mention uh, that uh, the structure of papers uh, differ from one language to another. Um, I've never done any writing in a, in a language as difficult and exotic as Japanese, which is considered as one of the most difficult uh, combining with different writing sets, etc. But but even French, English, and German or Spanish, I mean, you, you wouldn't structure the paper in the same way. So you know, if you see something that doesn't make sense because in your undergrad uh, studies you did, did, did it differently, it's maybe because with in in the English language it's supposed to be quite straightforward. And and to be honest, this is what I love about writing in English, you get the thing right up front. Whereas say in French, you have to write around it first. And it takes like, I don't know how many pages to actually get to the, to, to the nuts and bolts of it, which personally I have found frustrating, but that's just the way it is. The other thing I wanted to say about um, foreign language, um, I mean, the mastery of English as foreign language, um, and, and this, again, applies to any language. When I read papers and sometimes I see, you know, poorly formulated sentences, etc., I'm telling students, please, guys, uh, get somebody else to look at it. You know, cross, uh, it can be a fellow student. In fact, when I did my PhD, when I was preparing uh, for, for the defense, I had um, some other uh, fellow students uh, do presentations. So I would criticize theirs and they would do the same for me. And I thought that that was super helpful, but it doesn't have to be a fellow student. It can be, you know, uh, a colleague, it can be a friend, a family member, etc. cetera. Uh, and, but those, those extra pairs of eyes sometimes are very helpful. And of course you get some of that in the classroom, but also you can take it outside of the classroom. And finally, uh, and this, um, yeah, to, to, to sum up, uh, I found that sometimes my best ideas when I was kind of grinding over how to structure something have actually come not sitting in front of a computer or taking my computer to a very beautiful place and kind of contemplating where I was. And um, then all of a sudden it kind of the inspiration came. So be inspired, be passionate, and choose also something you can be passionate about, whether it is something you want to take forward because you want to change career paths, or maybe because it's something you have actually experienced from a professional point of view, and you want to dig into further and put into an academic kind of context. Back to you. Ref Raf, no. I, ha I have a piece of encouraging, a piece of statistics, if you let, very yeah. quickly. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, thank you. So I think it's quite encouraging that actually the majority, i.e. 90% of users are uh, English as the language, either for academia, you know, or business. We are non-native speakers, guys, 90% non-native. So we are the majority. <laughs> so I think that's quite encouraging, you know, that yes, high level of English is expected, but again, 90% of us, we learned it. So it's very doable and possible. But I'm sure that Dr. Tran, Matt, you have a lot to share. You did, you operate two languages, at minimum what I know so easily and, uh, you know, effectively. So any recommendation from you from Vietnam? Hi guys. Uh, yes, of of course. I mean, um, uh, 
I've been uh, running this program in Vietnam in, in um, the executive mode, uh, which, you know, answers some questions about a format as well. The executive mode is, is quite different in terms of, uh, of uh, approach and, and writing. My students are, are not, are not um, confident about, their, about English at all, as, and, uh, as Tony, um, you know, uh, can experience. Uh, but at the end of the day, they, you know, they, they made it through. And my advice to them would be, um, there are so many uh, brainstorming tools uh, to structure I your ideas, to start with um, topic sentences, um, to use Grammarly, for example. So writing is, uh, you know, to, 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 to have good grammar and, um, and sentence structure is, is not uh, you know, as, as difficult as, as it looks. Um, I, the, I think the most important thing that my students also care about because in Europe, you guys and my students as well, we're all doctorate students. Um, you know, it is assumed that your writing is excellent already. Um, you are, but it may be in your own language, right? So you can start with your own language because you want, if you want to add soft sentences, you know, beat around the bush a little bit, but you know, like, like a narrative uh, to your point, I think that's okay. Um, but at the end, um, but writing uh, is like training. It's like going to the gym. It's like uh, it's like a muscle that if you don't use it, um, you or you might find a muscle that that is that you um, you have it and you don't know, right? So I think this this program is also and also from my experience uh, from my students' experience as well. Um, they at the end they love writing, um, you know, about business in general. Uh, so don't. My point is, don't don't be afraid. Uh, if you are um, about to write something big, um, and again, as, as Viola and Tony said, um, you know there are many tools, and you can use your peers, your fellow students, your fellow uh, um, cohort mates uh, to help you help you out and to read it to them. Um, I think it's also a useful tool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, this, this is a great discussion and great interaction. I, uh, I appreciate everyone. So let's move on to the students Q&A and let's get, try to get to this one uh, quicker as we are almost running out of time and I know how busy everyone is. So the first one was how time constraints, how to fit it all in. And um, Sasha, we're considering that you're always traveling and being so busy. Do you want to answer this one? How do you fit it all in? Uh, yeah, it is busy. I mean, the next class with Dr. Chesso on Friday, I will conduct from London Heathrow. Uh, today it's uh, Doha and uh, it, it's, it comes back to your own uh, organization. Um, you really, really have to get organized because, um, and you have to be disciplined because if you don't have the discipline, if you, if you keep pushing it out, um, the assignments, then you will uh, end up in, in trouble. So self-organization, discipline, and um, you know, sticking to your own timelines is really, really key to success. And I always say, if I can do it with uh, you know, overlooking 157 airports around the world, um, then everyone else can, can do it. But you have to put in the work, like Dr. Chesso said in the beginning, if I recall correctly, if it would be very easy, everybody would have a doctor in front of their name, right? You have to put in the work, you have to stay disciplined, and you, ha you have to have the passion uh, and the will to be successful. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Um, how interactive is the program? Patricia, do you want to take that one? Yes. So it's a very interactive program. Um, like uh, many of my colleagues have already mentioned, we have our interactive classes on once a week, and then we have the recorded sessions um, once a week also. But even in between that, you can also reach out to your colleagues, um, you know, your cohorts, you know, to exchange ideas, discussions. And to be honest, um, one of the, the strong points of the program is, you know, the, the different media that we that you know is used to 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 teach. I mean, we have recordings, we have articles, Harvard Business Review articles. I mean, my first week we were asked to watch a movie. I mean, I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's various media 
you know, using various media to get across, you know, the points and the concepts. So quite interactive. I like the fact also that the, 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 the professors don't, I mean, they don't hog all the space. So there's a lot of time to talk, a lot of time to ask questions, a lot of time to hear um, your co colleagues provide their own perspective. And I think that's a very strong part of the learning because um, you're learning from you know, your colleagues, you're learning from their perspectives from different parts of the world. So one concept talk, talked about like six times from different six different parts of the world. So, I mean, it's much richer. And I think that's one of the strong points of this program. I haven't seen um, a program this diverse and this global. And to be honest, I think that's one of the strongest um, things about um, UBIS and it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's really interactive, really interactive. Thank you, Patricia. Oh, hey, you, um, next one. Do you learn in Zoom meeting or are there group projects? Uh, Mr. Yagi, if you want to take, combine this two in one, that'd be great. Uh, sure. Um, I don't really have a lot of experience yet with, uh, with, with the group projects, so I may let a more experienced uh, a student handle that one. Uh, but I can certainly address the learning in Zoom meetings. Um, for the last year and a half, um, almost every single class that I have both taught at the MBA level and also taken at the doctoral level has been uh, uh, by Zoom. And I have found that if you have a good uh, uh, if you have a good professor and uh, uh, the technology is at least uh, reasonable, you can accomplish at least ninety percent or maybe even ninety percent of uh, online of everything that you can accomplish. In a, um, in a classroom. And sometimes uh, uh, if you've got a really good professor, uh, sometimes you are able to do things by Zoom that you can't do in class. Um, like for example, I give um, lots of surveys. I love to do instant surveys of my students in class. And um, doing this in a classroom is actually quite uh, 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 time and labor intensive, but um, on Zoom, you can do it instantly. And uh, it's uh, it, it's a uh, it's a it's a lot of fun. So um, uh, I have found that if the if the if the students are engaged, um, if the professor knows what he or she is doing, and if everybody is prepared, I think that's the that's the key. You have to be really really prepared uh, for class. You have to you have to know you have to do your readings in advance. You have to know your uh, stuff cold. You want to turn in your homework in advance so that the instructor has a chance to review it before class starts. And if you use the uh, the time that you have wisely, um, uh, there's absolutely no problem at all. And in fact, um, uh, online education is almost certainly uh, the way of the future. In-person classes will be restricted to uh, things like uh, uh, laboratory experiments, uh, uh, you know, uh, team building exercises, things that you have to do uh, uh, face to face. But I can easily see in the future that anything from uh, from probably fifty percent to eighty percent of all education will eventually be uh, uh, online in some format because it really does allow you to do things so much more flexibly. And also you save so much time. If you look at the time spent in, in simply, uh, you know, people commuting to and from uh, their workplaces, you know, the physical, uh, you know, maintaining physical infrastructure and all that. So I actually think that the current generation, the people who have gone through the last year and a half of, of, um, of, uh, of, of Zoom and online education as a result of Corona, I actually think they're very fortunate because they're, they're real pioneers in figuring out uh, you know, how to do this effectively and how to do it well and how to do it fun. And um, I think that the lessons that we're all learning in terms of how to use technology, how to be creative, how to be flexible, I think these are gonna be very, very valuable uh, skills for all of us in the future. Awesome, thank Sorry, you, Adam, I appreciate it. Sorry, Raf, I think it's important to mention that we had no choice. <laughs> we, we were just pushed into that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Sasha, I saw you also had your, uh, you raised your, raise your hand. Yeah, I mean, I just want to say, yes, there are group projects for, for uh, the potential students on those calls, uh, on this call. And then I just want to, want to just, uh, 
because I hear this question quite a bit. Uh, do you learn in Zoom meetings? And I always say pretty much the same what Ed was just saying, but uh, you know, it winds me up a little bit because the entire world from, from the first grade, uh, you know, in America, in the Philippines, in Asia, in Africa, to the college students, to the high school, school students in the last two years across the world, they have done nothing else than Zoom meetings. So if the answer to do you learn in Zoom meetings would be no, that would be, <laughs> that would be very scary for the entire world because, like I said, the entire world was in the last two years by default forced to have online school meetings. And, you know, to be honest, I, I find this school, Zoom meetings um, much more efficient than sitting in a, in a, in a classroom, to, to be quite honest. Absolutely. Thank you, Sasha. Oh, hey, the next one is what I have haven't decided on my dissertation topic. How can I begin without it? And if I can have maybe one of the faculty members or our student, whoever wants to take this one, that'd be greatly appreciated. I can just comment very quickly. Right, sure. don't, don't feel like you have to come into a doctoral program knowing what you want to do. Learn first, get the coursework down, get some momentum, and then your research, your line of inquiry will begin to be shaped. That's very important. Um, and then it just hits you. And, in, and even when it hits you, it's still going to be tweaked, tweaked, tweaked. And then, you know, as we often say, uh, action. Okay. But it's going to take some time. Just relax. Come in here with an open mind and discover some, some new stuff for sure. Uh, Raf, I'm sorry, I might be wrong, but I think one of the requirements when, when students apply, they actually have to submit about 200 words about the potential project they want to research, right? It is a motivation letter of why you best, why your DBA, and you can add potentially it, uh, what your ideas are for the dissertation topic, yes. Yeah, right. Okay, I think I can advertise my course that is a 701, mm -hmm. uh, where we are going to talk about that. Uh, we are we are going to talk about the questions for research, you know, how to ask, what to ask, because, you know, there are some secrets. So do come to the classes, <laughs> I would say. Yes, we are going to discuss that. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, hey, um, I, I, I feel that they do I interact with my classmates. It's been answered uh, by everyone providing their testimonial, which I appreciate. Um, and the why you best, I think we all have share that um, uh, across the entire presentation. So on that note, I know we only have two minutes uh, and, and now we know for next time to um, uh, to get some of the other questions answered. So we see, so please let's use uh, the raise your hand that I missed Tony by mistake and I apologize again, uh, or let's use also the chat functionality. Um, I see, I see one question when it comes to how much time on average is one to in, is one supposed to invest per week. Um, I let one of our students um, answer that from their experience. Does anybody want to take it? Sasha, Anna, Carmela, or or Patricia, uh, or or um, Shelter. Yeah, I can quickly, and then unfortunately, I have to to move on. I have a meeting with Lufthansa in the. United States. Mm -hmm. um, look, first of all, just the, the, the question before, um, do you interact with classmates? Just, just to let everybody know on the, on the, on the call. Yes, we do. We, we help each other. We have WhatsApp chats. We have other social media chats and we all help each other. We look after each other. Um, you know, um, so they, 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 it's a great community, by the way. Um, when it comes to the time, I, I think it, it depends on your, on yourself. You know, it. Uh, I can only speak for myself, and I'm unfortunately not the smartest. And sometimes I have to read the same page over and over until I understand it. So it takes me a little bit more time than others. Um, but I would say some some put in five hours, others put in fifteen hours per week. So it it's, it depends on you and um, and in how fast you can read and how fast you can write and. You know, like I said, um, I would say it, it goes really, um, for me, it's around 10 to 15 hours a, a week um, in order to, to complete my work. I know others need five, five hours more, others uh, 
take five hours less. Thank you, Sasha. And I see Carmela also reply back saying she's done. She does two to two to three hours of reading every day. Um, shelter says a minimum of about three hours, um, three hours per day. And then Carmela said she enjoys all the reading. So, yeah, I mean, from from uh, from that perspective, I would say it also depends absolutely on the time and the person, and yeah, and how much. Um, how much time it requires you to for some of the material. So, are there any other questions? So, I know this has been very lively and very dynamic, which I appreciate. So, I can move on to the next steps as I know everyone is um, very busy. All right. Feel free to raise your hand. I'm going to move on to the next step. Or feel free to raise your hand or tap in the chat room while, uh, while I do this. So, the next steps is to attend orientation. The DBA orientation, it is going to happen next Thursday. Um, the global admissions team will reach out to you for times. It is important that you complete your final admissions requirements. It's very imperative that you do that because if you don't, you will not have, you will not be able to receive the following, which is your personalized doctoral dissertation handbook your UBIS credentials that you need to log in um, into the learning management system, such as your UBIS email. And that's how we um, communicate moving forward with all students. The learning management systems credentials, access to our library, a final acceptance letter, the course mapping with your schedule, and last but not least, your student ID. Um, again, it is very important that you complete that ideally before the global admissions team will be reaching out to ensure we provide you with the assistance to get all that completed. On that note, I don't see any other questions on... Okay, I see one. Can somebody recommend online sources for reading? watching in order to stay in on on track with what's going on on the global business world anybody we have any recommendations for pia well, i think harvard business review is good there's so many platforms and it depends on um which I mean, which region you're in. I know, I know we're global now, but you know, we have some like Business Week. Uh, there's some mag there's some online magazines that you know um, might actually be to your preference. But Harvard Business Review is always a good place to start. Um, I so yeah, Harvard Business Review, and then and I see all. Yeah. I see Shelter also recommended that, and Carmela recommended the Wall Street Journal. So the yeah and the South China Morning Post. So yeah, there are some good recommendations there. I appreciate it, everyone. Okay, what else? Any other questions? Oh, okay, there's also the Bloomberg Business by uh, uh, Anna. Thank you, Anna. All right, so I, we are three minutes over. Um, again, I appreciate everyone's time. Uh, the discussion has been great. So this is, this has been, uh, it's definitely kept me up as it's very early here in the United States. Um, so definitely I appreciate you all taking the time uh, to uh, be here with us, answer questions for us to discuss amongst each other. Thank you to the incoming students. Thank you to the current students. Thank you to the faculty and staff and administration. And I am on behalf of the UBIS Board of Directors Welcome into the program. This is going to be a great journey that we cannot wait to be part of it with you and see your walk across the state of graduation. So thank you again, everyone. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week and stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye.